No, you. You cheese eating surrender monkeys. And to my French listeners, bonjour. Je m'appelle Jim Z. Franco. And I, I really needed to stop doing that. You know, it, it's, it's funny enough because um, I can actually understand uh, the French language very, very well. But don't ever ask me to try and say any of it. But um, you know what? Chom uh, Celice, as they say in France. And um, <laughs> if you are wondering at all why, because this is like really like going to uh, unprecedented territory, but. Like, I, I have mentioned this, like, once or twice before, that one of the ways I kind of want to keep things fresh around here is to actually indulge in some classics as well. Because uh, I do uh, like a bit of uh, bit of peace and quiet from the classics around here as well, as well as the um, the sort of violence and uh, the, uh, the, uh, the, strike, uh, the strikefulness of my heavy metal music. But since we're here, let's... Uh, we're going to check this out, and... In case you're wondering why I'm not going to start with perhaps the, uh, with God Save the King. It's because I'm not. Because I don't support the royal family. That's it. Now, for those who are wondering why it is called uh, La Marseilles in the first place, it's because it was named after a popular militant uh, wing during the, uh, the French Revolution. In fact, I can even give you some, uh, something right here. Uh, the Marseilles is the national anthem of France, and it was written in 1792 by Claude Joseph Roger de Lys in Strasbourg after the declaration of war by France against Austria, and was originally titled Chant de Gaulle pour le Mans du Ron. And I think it was literally just because it was just named after the Marseilles because of the popularity of the the volunteer army units from uh, from Marseille, and um, 1792. Let me think. Um, this was about, was it about like 20 or maybe, it might have been 15 years after Napoleon Bonaparte was born um, to become to become French immediately because he was originally born in uh, Corsica, which was, which then uh, uh, Genia just sold to, uh, the, sold to the French. And this was when uh, Napoleon was in uh, military school and... Thanks to the result of the revolution, he was um, promoted from like private to brigadier general. It's, uh, there's a, there's a, like a, there's loads of videos out there on Napoleon, and maybe when we get to perhaps um, uh, uh, the the day of the Baptiste, my brother's birthday, we'll celebrate in uh, in style by taking a look at the history of Napoleon. Because again, to keep things fresh, to keep things original, to um, spice things up a bit round here. I think it'll be really, really interesting. So, with that being said, please stand or rise, if you will, for the French national anthem, composed in well, what do they say? G ma uh, in G major. So, let's begin, shall we? Thank you. 
Get in there, my sons. Get right in there. Um, I'm going to straight up find out um, <clears throat> who composed this as well. I mean, it, it's obviously going to be some uh, uh, it, some orchestra specifically. Um, I, I I don't think it necessarily does say about um, if there if there was a, a very specific choir behind all this, but I got to say. One thing that I think might become a little bit evident because I do sort of like want to make this a thing where we sort of almost like we want to rank all national anthems. That certainly won't make people feel very, very upset. I can guarantee you. Because with that being said, Qatar has a very beautiful national anthem. That absolutely. I mean, yeah, it really, it really does. I'm not trying to joke anyone around or anything like that. Um, but what I think is also really what's very, very interesting is that it. It it's basically summarizes the uh, a lot of the spirit of the the French Revolution, which for those who uh, have, I mean, I know quite a bit about the the French Revolution, and certainly my sister does, because ten years ago, well, it was more than ten years ago, it was like about nearly thirteen years ago, she was studying it in her first year of uh, secondary school. Is that? It was which it was basically a war against war of the uh, the working class uh, against uh, the likes of King Louis the Sixteenth, and about how many specific regions all throughout France had very had varied levels of uh, tax uh, imports. Not to mention there's the fact that certain members of like each district they had to work seven days a week. Some of them had to work days without getting paid. Many of them also had to get taxed for the amount of like things like salt that they had to uh, use throughout a year. Anything they had left over, how many windows they had in the house, there was a tax for that. And many of the many of the uh, many of the harvests that many of the uh, the poor working peasants had to uh, give away absolutely for nothing, whilst the uh, the whilst the uh, the the the, uh, the, uh, the nobility and the elite uh, classes had to absolutely nothing to be concerned about whatsoever. Meanwhile, uh, it was even during this time, I think, uh, maybe, I think it might have been 1786 was when the uh, Estates General was held, which is like the first time it was ever held in 200 years in France, which was about, which King Louis XVI summoned because it was the only, it was the closest thing that the French had to a, uh, to a government back then. And it worked out that the, uh, the nobility, the clergy, both had one vote each, and the working uh, class, the peasants, which was about, had a population of roughly about 27 to 28 million people, had one vote between them. So any, um, any rules or any regulations changed, it was all down to the fact that the nobility and the clergy would get, would get the majority of the votes to raise taxes on the third estate, and... 
which literally led to the formations of things like uh, the Jacobin Club um, and the uh, the beginnings of the removal of the monarchy entirely. And it's it's a very long and complex procedure about certain names and certain procedures like the tennis court oath and also about um, Napoleon's role in all this and how he 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 led several uh, uh, frontier assaults against um, many of the uh, the enemies of the revolution. Then, of course, the French having to uh, declare war against basically the rest of Europe because uh, France's revolution basically uh, shifted the power throughout all of Europe from the Prussian empires to the uh, the Roman em to the the Holy Roman empires of uh, that were controlled by the Spanish. Uh, the Italians, the Russians, and the British, all of them were basically at war against uh, against the French at this time. But, like I said, there's probably going to be a lot more to go over this during then. But I absolutely love the, the ho heroism, the, the triumph, and the exclamation of the nobility and of the selflessness of their cause, which was all composed or formated absolutely into the Marseillaise. Which, I'm pretty sure they must have inspired this from Napoleon, because one of the things that made Napoleon such a great general is that he uh, he elaborated, he glorified his uh, soldiers uh, of his own private army with uh, the fact that they, they were going to see the first money they would ever see in years. And there's a, there's, a, there's a tremendous sense of loyalty, of brotherhood, of comradeship, all summarised not only in Napoleon's campaigns, but all the way in through Lamarcieux, which really summarizes exactly how noble and how hard they fought for their cause. So that's always a good thing to always consider, especially going into this. So anyway, I hope all of you guys have enjoyed this reaction video to Lamarcieux. Please also make sure to leave all your thoughts and comments in the comment section down below. Let me know what you guys felt of France's national anthem for yourselves. And... I can't wait to literally go through the rest of probably the entire world if we have to, to see other national anthems because I don't know if there's things like Saudi Arabia, China, I'm not too sure, well Russia might be a bit uh, more complicated because of certain you know political issues going on right now, but Ukraine absolutely, in fact, yeah Ukraine absolutely sounds like the sort of thing we should go for next and um, we'll see how uh, how that all plays out. So. Thank all of you guys so much, and I cannot wait to see all of you guys again in the next video. Au revoir. Au revoir indeed.